Throughout the centuries, many women found themselves accused of being witches, or involved in witchcraft, and the kings and queens greatly feared sorcery. Henry VIII would sentence Elizabeth Barton to death for prophesying the king's death, and the Tudor monarch believed she was also a witch. Many women found themselves being subjected to witch trials. For example, some were dunked in water, and if they survived their ordeals, then they were sentenced to death anyway. It was a very dangerous time, and scores of women all over Europe were being executed just because someone had the audacity to accuse them of witchcraft. However, during the reign of King James I, there were three women, a mother and two daughters, who were accused of being involved in the deaths of two young brothers, the heirs to Francis Manners, the sixth Earl of Rutland, who lived at Beaver Castle. However, what is their story? Joan, Margaret and Philippa Flower later became known as the Witches of Beaver and were known in the local area to have been herbal healers and they were suffering financially at the turn of the 17th century. They accepted employment to work as servants for the 6th Earl and Countess of Rutland at Beaver Castle and they worked as additional staff as King James I was planning to visit their house and castle. However, the sisters and their mother were very unpopular with the other staff and they faced accusations of theft and poor behaviour, and all three of them were sacked. But only Joan was given any form of severance package, and she was given 40 shillings, a pillow, and a mattress of wool. After the sacking of the Flower family and the women, the Earl and Countess of Rutland became severely ill, and were suffering from vomiting and convulsions. But their son and heir, Henry Baron de Ross, also became ill, and he succumbed to his illness, and died on the 26th of September 1613. Their younger children also got very sick, and their other son, named Francis, and the next in line for the heirdom, was also killed by the illness. However, this attracted suspicion, especially after the sacking of Joan, Margaret and Philippa, and the fact they were considered herbal healers and meddlers with the dark arts. There were nine women hanged as witches in Leicestershire on the 16th of July 1616 for charges such as bewitching a young boy, and these were charges that were similar to what happened in the case of the Earl of Rutland and the Flowers Girls. These women were said to have kept cats as familiars. However, five years after the sacking of the women, they were arrested, and after their initial interrogation in February of 1619, the women were sent to Lincoln Jail and were held within the confines of the castle. The mother Joan protested her innocence at the jail, and she was not known for being a religious woman, but she claimed that she could not have been a witch. On the route to the prison, she asked for some bread for the Eucharist as she wanted to prove she was not a witch. However, she said something so blessed as holy bread could not be consumed by a witch, but disturbingly, after her first bite, she choked and died from this with many believing that she had actually been a witch, and that the good light of the Lord had killed this malevolent woman. But whilst at Lincoln, Margaret, one of the daughters, now accused her mother of witchcraft, but Philippa, her sister, admitted to witchcraft on behalf of her mother and sisters. She said that they entered into the communion with familiar spirits that helped them to poison and bring about the deaths of the Earl of Rutland's heirs, and in making the family very sick. They claimed that they had stole the glove of one of the boys and gave it to their mother, who had dipped it in boiling water. They then cast some incantations, and then this caused the Lord Ross to become ill and die. They admitted that they attempted to harm their daughter, Lady Catherine, and that this failed after a cat named Rutterkin, their mother's familiar, had no power over her. The women also took some feathers from the bed of the Earl of Rutland, and it was believed they cast this into a pot and then boiled them, and they mixed this with blood and cast spells to prevent the Earl and Countess of Rutland having any more children. Both of the women admitted to experiencing visions of the devil. But during their interrogation, they revealed the names of other women from the local area that helped them. These were Anna Baker of Bottisford, Joan Wilmot of Goadby, and Ellen Green of Statham, and these three women claimed they had similar visions. Willimot said her familiar was called 
pretty and had been blown into her mouth by a former master in the form of a city. William had testified as a cunning woman and not a witch and said her familiar only spoke to her and helped her about healing. She said she never hurt anybody but did help diverse persons that were stricken or forespoken, bewitched, and that her spirit came weakly to her, and would tell of diverse persons that were stricken and forespoken, and she said that the use which she had of the spirit was to know those did which she had undertaken to amend, and she did help them by certain prayers which she used. Ellen Green claimed she went with Willimut to a wood, where Willimut conjured two spirits in the form of a mole and a kitten, and that these were then sent to kill a woman, who died within a fortnight. However, Margaret and Philippa Flowers, who tried before Henry Hobart, the Lord Chief Justice of the Common Pleas, and Edward Bromley, a Baron of the Exchequer. The pair were both found guilty. Margaret, on the 11th of March, 1619, was taken from her place of imprisonment and walked on to the walls of Lincoln Castle. Here a large gallows stood, and she was taken on to these, and an executioner that hanged her in front of the huge crowd that had assembled below. However, Philippa was not executed for her crimes, as it was said that she managed to drug the guards who was tasked with keeping her under lock and key, and she then fled the castle and managed to get to Kent, where she had three children and lived a life before eventually dying after escaping her fate but some also claimed that she was too hanged at Lincoln, on the same gallows as her sister would be. But the case of the three witches was incredibly shocking, as it also involved many more women, and the Earl and Countess of Rutland believed so much that their sons had been killed by witchcraft, that this was inscribed in their monument at local church. It read, In 1608 he married ye lady Cecilia Hungerford, daughter to ye honourable knight Sir John Tufton, by whom he had two sons, both of which died in infancy by wicked practices and sorcery. Some historians have claimed that the women were framed, and that in fact the family were poisoned. The story of the witches of Beaver is a strange one, and it's not known how much of the interrogations of the women were extracted through threats or even torture, It would be strange if all of the women involved admitted their actions years after the deaths of the two sons, but at the heart of this was a number of women who were being accused of witchcraft during a very dangerous time, in which the English king, James I himself, was obsessed about the subject of witches. They could have been women who themselves were accused of crimes and had little way of getting off the charges, and their testimony could have been falsified and they could have in fact been victims themselves. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.